Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christie. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today I'm going to give you an update on COVID-19. Let's start with obesity and COVID-19. A recent meta-analysis published in Obesity Reviews at the end of August included 75 international studies that examined obesity and COVID-19. The big takeaways are that if you're obese with a BMI greater than 30, you have more than double the likelihood of going into the hospital from a COVID-19 infection and a 50% more likelihood of dying from COVID-19. This is so significant because 43% of adults in the U.S. are obese and another 25 to 30% are in the overweight category. Well, why does this happen? Patients with obesity have impaired immune systems, increased inflammation in the extra adipose tissue, and metabolic dysfunction, which increases their risks for things like diabetes, and simply caring for someone in the hospital with obesity is so much more difficult. For example, placing them on their stomach, which has been shown to be helpful for patients that are critically ill with COVID-19, is so much more difficult with an obese person. Let's move on to remdesivir. A promising double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled study, which is the gold standard type of study, was published in the New England Journal of Medicine on October 8th. It studied a total of over 1,000 patients that were randomized to receive remdesivir versus a placebo. And the results showed that patients that received remdesivir recovered five days faster than those that received a placebo. And this recovery was seen even more prominently in patients that were started on remdesivir earlier in their disease. If it was given after someone was on a ventilator, it didn't seem to provide the benefits seen when it was given to someone in the hospital, but not on oxygen. Well, why might that be? Well, we know that remdesivir is an antiviral, and it's thought that the earlier that it's given, the better. But interestingly enough, a few days after the New England Journal of Medicine article was published, a non-peer-reviewed, randomized, non-blinded study of 11,000 patients sponsored by the WHO and 405 hospitals in 30 countries. It's called the Solidarity Study, and patients were given one of four different antivirals, remdesivir, hydroxychloroquine, lopinavir, and interferon. No placebo was used. You either got medication or you didn't. And their conclusions were that remdesivir, hydroxychloroquine, lopinavir, and interferon regimens appeared to have little or no effect on hospitalized COVID-19 patients. And this was indicated by overall mortality, initiation of ventilation, and duration of hospital stay. Well, how disappointing. And for remdesivir specifically, it seems to be in direct contradiction to the New England Journal of Medicine study. But let's look a little bit closer at the data and realize that although this study had lots of patients, over 11,000, there are still lots of questions about the type of patients that were put in the study, how sick they were when they were given the medications, and what standard of care the other patients got when they did not get the antiviral medications. And when you look closer, the graphs that show the patients that were given remdesivir before they were on a ventilator possibly had some benefits, which would be similar to the results in the New England Journal of Medicine study. So at the end of the day, I don't think it's time to give up on remdesivir quite yet. The New England Journal of Medicine study was a gold standard study that helped us to see that giving remdesivir earlier is better. And the solidarity study, although much larger, needs to provide more specific information about the patients in the study to help us understand those results. Now, let's talk about another kind of treatment that's gotten some traction. Convalescent plasma and monoclonal antibodies, or the antibody cocktail. Convalescent plasma has been used since the start of the COVID crisis. Using the plasma from someone that's recovered because their blood has a certain amount of antibodies that can fight the SARS-CoV-2 virus effectively because their antibodies are familiar with the virus and have fought it before. The problem with convalescent plasma is that you never really know how many SARS-CoV-2 antibodies the person that's donating the plasma has. So what if you could just infuse the specific antibodies to SARS-CoV-2? 
Well, this is the antibody cocktails that you're hearing about. President Trump received the Regeneron antibody cocktail that's in phase three trials right now. We don't have good data from these companies yet, but their press releases state that they're obtaining good results. Of course, we have to interpret this with caution, but I'm hopeful that as we get more data, this will become the standard of care for early treatment of COVID-19. Thanks again for joining me.